Hello, hello. <laughs> I'm dropping in. Oh, I'm a little bit late. I'm sorry about that. So I'm just going to hang out for a few minutes and see if anybody is able to join the stream. Uh, when I figure out how to do this a little bit better, I will do a better job of announcing and getting the word out. I would like to say I've been outside all afternoon working on the garden. Hello, Grandma Seven. How are you doing? Thank you for coming in today. I've been outside. Uh, it's beautiful. We had so much rain. It's like this really weird nor'easter. And I think when I talked with you last week, it was super overcast and it just rained all week. And then we had a day of clearing and then it rained again. I was just a mess. So finally it's clearing out, it's warming up. And I took some time today to actually get out and you know, work on getting things planted because I've got all these plants that I've needed to put in. So I'm kind of a wreck. So. <laughs> Oh, hi, Mary. Oh, you've been in the yard as well. Yeah, it was a good day for it here. And I'm so grateful because it has been so cool and so cloudy, just crazy, just the coolest, wettest spring. Hello, Terry. Oh, you got the notification. Okay, that's great. I'm so glad to hear that. Lorelai Joy, Washington State. How are you doing? I hope that uh, the weather is much nicer up there where you are. I think you had a lot of rain also. Terry says you're in quarantine. Well, I hope you're okay, Terry. <laughs> that sounds a little bit serious. Um, uh, welcome. So I wanted to drop in with everybody and see if you had any specific questions regarding the uh, quilt that uh, I've been sharing the different blocks for you to make the different rows. If you have any questions, now is a great time to ask those. Uh, the second block, which will make the second row, is now live uh, both on the website as well as the uh, tutorial video. So what I'm doing is putting uh, written instructions with pictures on the blog. And then the video lives here, of course, on YouTube. And I wanted to let you know that uh, I was able to make a printable for the heart. And uh, so you can go to that uh, latest blog post, which is linked below. Uh, go ahead over there and take a look at that uh, that post. And at the very end, uh, you can click on the picture and you would be able to download the printable that will give you the cutting instructions uh, for the block. And then within the blog post itself, it will give you the cutting instructions for the full row. So I would love to hear how you guys uh, like that printable. And I will go back and do one for the Sawtooth Star as well. And I also wanted to let you know, I don't remember who it was off the top of my head, but somebody emailed me and uh, asked about a uh, coloring page for the quilt, which I thought was a really great idea. And I was able to figure out how to make something like that. So... I will work on getting that as a downloadable uh, printable also, because I thought that was a super smart idea. So I see other people have been checking in. I'm going to just go through the chat and see who else is here. Laura says, I'm in Oklahoma, raining off and on. Heat is set in and it's in the mid 80s. Gorgeous. Thank goodness, huh? <laughs> same, same kind of weather here, actually. Oh, Karen is, or uh, 
recovering from total knee replacement. Oh, that is such a big surgery. You know, the doctor makes it out like, you know, they make it sound like it's going in to get a haircut. You know, it's like, oh, you just come in. It's an, it's a half an hour on the table and you're out. And I always feel like they don't adequately prepare the patient for the amount of recovery that really goes into a surgery like that. So I hope that you have help and I hope that you are getting good follow-up care and plenty of PT. That is really important. Susan says, lovely to join you again. Best wishes from Devon UK. Oh, thank you for joining Susan. So far you win the prize for farthest away. Uh, Lorelai says, we love the rain. Yeah, I'm, I do too, but <laughs> sometimes it gets to be a little bit much. Uh, Connie says, I finished the first, squ first square from the first row. Oh, Connie, that is really great. Um, drop in the comments what uh, colors that you wound up going with. I'd like to hear what colors. In fact, I'd like to hear from all of you. What kind of colors are you guys using for your version of the quilt? Uh, let's see, Lorelai says, I'm at lunch and I was watching, oh, the previous live and got the notification you're live now. Oh, that's really awesome. Thank you for spending your lunch with us. Mary says, I appreciate videos as well as the blog post. Thank you, Mary. I, I think that, at least for me, I, I'm a visual learning, visual learner. And so having the photos with the video is really helpful. I feel like they both fill in different uh, parts of the questions that we have when we're trying to make these things on our own. And sometimes it helps to have that still image to look at while having the video instruction to kind of walk you through. So I do like to, to coordinate them and have both. I think it's important. Uh, plus, I like to have, you know, any kind of printables or anything like that. I like to have those live on my own website. You know, YouTube is great for a lot of things, but on some things it does fall short. So uh, I know like some people I've seen, not necessarily here, but on other channels that I watch, like um, viewers don't like it if you redirect them to your website, <laughs> but I mean, you can't do everything here. You just... It, there are limitations. And if I'm going to share patterns and things like that with you, uh, I like you to get the full experience. And so that's why I, you know, will direct you to the website also. So hopefully, hopefully you find that the website is enjoyable when you go over to visit. I will tell you, I took some time yesterday on it. Um, when I started the next blog post for the next uh, design on the quilt. And I went ahead and freshened up the homepage a little bit. So uh, I would love if you checked that out and let me know what you think. I just like uh, updated some of the pictures. I updated some of the colors and uh, I think it's really pretty. So hopefully you also enjoy it. <laughs> I mean, really, I make it for you guys. So I'm hoping that you find the website an enjoyable place to go spend a little time and hang out. Let's see who else is here. Oh, Jody from Arizona. Hi, Jody. Let's see. Ms. Yalford, uh, Patty, Ohio here. Hoping to start the new sew along tomorrow. How do I get to the blog so I can get the cutting instructions for block one? I'm so glad you asked. Uh, if you look in the description box, which is below this video, there will be a link over to, well, there's actually three links. The first link will be to the overview of the quilt, which is called the power of three. And that will give you the overview and just sort of a general idea of how it will look when you're done. And then uh, the other uh, two blocks will appear as their own separate blog post. So I will do a blog post and a video for each of the steps along the way. So we'll have uh, all of that for the blocks. And then as we move into putting on the borders, 
uh, I will do a special video for that. I, I haven't decided. I think when we get to the part about the actual quilting, uh, I think I'll just kind of show you guys how I do the quilt sandwich because, um, you know, I'm, I'm like you, I am working in a home environment. I don't have a professional uh, studio or access to a fabric store uh, to do my work. I literally, I mean, you can see behind me. <laughs> My living room is the studio that I use. And so just like you, I'm doing everything at home. And so I don't have, you know, the like really large places to put things out for finishing. So when I first set up my quilt sandwich, I do it on the floor and I get it all kind of together and then I roll it up and then I will um, like drape it over here. That's my, um, my Tornviken kitchen island that I love. That's the biggest Ikea piece that I've ever put together. I have a video on that and I tell you, I love the thing. I've used it now for, oh gosh, almost a year and a half and it's fantastic. It's the most expensive um, piece of furniture that I've got in the room. But for me, it was well worth that investment because I use it constantly. And you can see like now it's got all the canning stuff set up on it. So, you yeah, know, I'm like, I'm, I'm up to my eyeballs and trying to do uh, canning and all of that stuff as well. So it's just kind of a catch all, but you know, it's, it's a work surface and that's part of some of the work that I'm doing. So anyway, I lost my train of thought. Uh, I guess we were talking about when I get to the quilting part, I'm thinking out loud. I do a lot of thinking out loud. So I figure I'll just um, show, show you very honestly how I will set up to do the quilting. And I do um, the, uh, the, the safety pins where you pin together. I don't do the spray basting because it's, I mean, it's like a glue and because it's my living environment and you can see, I mean, I have carpeting. I don't want to risk getting glue all over my carpet. So I just do the old school, very basic, um, the little safety pins and I'll just kind of show you how I do it. And it, and it works, you know, and then I'll quilt on this machine which is my heavy duty. I haven't even done a, like a review on that for you. But you can see I set up the walking foot on the heavy duty. And I mean, gosh, this thing will just go through. <laughs> go through. I think it would sew through iron, to be honest. So uh, anyway, love the machine. When we get through this quilting project, we'll get more into sewing machine videos and all of that. Uh, I have to be honest. The, the quilt along is it's a bigger project to share than I was really expecting you know, it's like they say, uh, you know, my eyes are bigger than my stomach. Well, it's kind of my, uh, the case uh, with this quilt along. It's a lot bigger project than I was expecting, but that's okay. Um, I feel like putting together something like this is just as much a learning experience for me as it is for you. So uh, I really, really appreciate you for being here and for being excited about the pattern and wanting to make it along with me. That makes me feel really, really good. So anyway, I do want to hear from you though, if something is not clear, if you have questions, do not hesitate to ask those questions. And, uh, you know, I don't have an editor, so I don't have another real set of eyes to be looking at things behind me. So uh, I rely on you guys to tell me if something doesn't make sense. So you're not going to hurt my feelings if you ask a question or if something isn't clear. Uh, you know, when you write the instructions yourself, you're trying to make sure that it's clear for other people. But, um, you know, I, I could be missing something um, that is just not obvious to me. So let me know if something doesn't make sense for you. I do want to know. Okay, I'm going to go through the uh, the chat and let's see. Oh, Rasha from Iraq. Well, welcome. 
It's lovely to see you. Coloring page would be awesome. Yeah, I I was like, it was such a great idea. And I wish I could remember the viewer's name. I should have taken the time to go back through the email to, to get their name so I could mention them specifically. But I just, I don't know. It was more to do in the, the garden space. And it's like I have a really small garden space, but... I've never planted this much stuff before. Usually I just do some flowers and herbs and it's, it's pretty laid back. But um, this year I'm, I'm trying to grow food and I have actually grown things from uh, seed, which they worked, which I'm so surprised about. So <laughs> but it's not easy. Seeds are hard. So uh, today I put out several uh, red pepper plants and they they weren't looking too good they were really small they were you know spindly looking but I just let them keep growing I kept putting the grow light on them and they're starting to come around so I potted them up uh, gave them fresh soil gave them a whole bunch of fertilizer so hopefully they'll really take off for me at this point I think getting them outside and into the really good light is going to help. That's for sure. Let's see. Oh, good. Lots of, okay. Karen says lots of people forewarned her. Yeah. The doctors are like, oh, it's no big deal. It's like um, my mother, when she was, she would have been 89 because she was 91 this year. She's 80 and she's frail. Okay. She's tiny. She's frail. Um, she has really bad shoulders and we went to see an orthopedist and to see what could be done. And of course he wanted to do the full shoulder replacement. And he's like, Oh, you know, I'm in and out. It's 30 minutes. I'm like, that's, that's a big surgery on an older person, you know, and he was just very minimal on it, but you know, <sighs> You're cutting through bone and you're putting in new joint sockets and all of that. I mean, that's a lot. And she has some osteoporosis, so, but I, you know, he sees this every day. I understand that. But anyway, we didn't do it. We just felt like it was a little iffy. And I worry about the anesthesia. That's the big thing. The anesthesia scares me. But anyway, we're just cranking along as we are. Oh, Mary did the, the blue, yellow, and red. I, you know, it always works. <laughs> it just does. It always works. So Crafty Marigold said she is using pink, blue, and green. Oh, I bet that's pretty. Very springy. Connie says, I'm using a vintage baseball print for the center block. Oh, okay. And a deep red marble print and a light blue star print. Oh, I bet that is pretty. They all coordinate with the baseball print, and I'm sure my grandson will love it. Oh, well, that sounds awesome. So I would assume you're doing like a, is it a fussy cut? Like a large print with the uh, the baseball print? Because the way that I did that sawtooth star, it, it has that really large middle, that six and a half inch square. You can do a lot in a six and a half inch square, but... I just wanted to leave it as a solid. So if you had a large print, you could really have some fun with a fussy cut in that particular area. There's plenty of room for it. Boondock Crafter says, hello from North Dakota. Wow, North Dakota. So you guys have really had a time. I know you had a really late snowstorm. So hopefully that's all melted off and you're drying out and warming up. Oh, Mitch and Philip. Getting ready for your own live later, but we wanted to pop in and say hi. Hope all is well. Everything is great. I keep missing you guys. I I don't know. It's just crazy. I, I know you know. Did you wind up moving? You may not be here anymore. I know that you were trying to uh, sell your home and do a big move, and I have lost complete track of what has been going on in your lives. I feel kind of bad about that. And I hope Philip is feeling really good. I know the last time 
that I saw you on Instagram. I mean, Philip was just doing all this cooking and all this like um, heavy duty stuff. Well, I would say heavy duty, but a lot of baking. So, and baking can be a little bit taxing. So I was glad to see that he was feeling well enough to be up and doing all of that. That is a blessing. Let's see. Jody says yellow, orange. Oh, okay. Yellow, orange, red, violet, and blue, green. Ooh, that is pretty. I can tell that you used your color wheel. <laughs> Not what I would normally put together. It's, I know, right? It's so funny how it works, isn't it? Terry says, I say my machine can sew bricks together. Oh, girl, is it, it's an awesome thing to have. So what, what are you using? Linda says, hello from Charlotte, North Carolina. Hi, Linda. We're kind of neighbors. Lorelai says, too excited that somebody wanted a color page. <laughs> it, it's an awesome idea. Oh, Jody says, I appreciate all the information. Okay, great. Oh, good. Yeah, you know, sometimes I think having um, the pictures and the written steps to go with the video is a, like, to me, that is like, the best way to learn how to do something new. And I know um, like some of the people that follow me are experienced and have made these types of projects before, but I know that I get a lot of people who this, this might be your first time actually uh, cutting and sewing quilt blocks. And certainly I've heard from a lot of you that it's your first quilt. So I do want to make sure that everything is like very, very clear for you. Because it can be overwhelming. I'm not going to lie. It can be a very overwhelming thing. And as it gets bigger, it gets a little bit stressful. I just should forewarn you. But I will tell you, it is worth it. Just keep going. But it, it gets a little big. <laughs> and I tried to keep it small. But it still got a little big. But that's okay. Because when you're done, you'll have something beautiful that you can either gift to somebody or that you can put on your bed. I'm like super psyched to put this on my bed. Let's see. Oh, Jeanette, please, girl, I'm just glad that you're here. Donna says, uh, problems with chipmunks. <laughs> we, uh, we have moles and voles and I have bunny rabbits here. I can relate. Planting containers. I have old coolers, big ones, and planted beets in them. Oh, that's smart. Covered it with tool, and it keeps them off and out of the container. Oh, that's kind of, that's smart. Yeah, the, I have to put everything in containers, and it's really funny. I have um, I have a couple of uh, small planters uh, that are like a low profile, and they're, you know, they're designed for like a, like a condo or a small porch or something. And if they're down on the ground, the bunny rabbits get in there and eat everything. And they just, they make me crazy. I noticed uh, in my, in my front area, I have what I, what I used to call my pollinator garden. Okay. It's not much of a pollinator garden anymore because the doggone rabbits eat everything. Well, I have uh, black-eyed Susans that are uh, planted out there. And uh, I walked out today to just, I survey stuff every day just to see how the plants look. And I was like, those are not growing very fast. And I was like, it's time to put the fertilizer on, I guess. But anyway, I was like, they're not growing. And then I looked more closely. There's a bunch of leaves that have been eaten. So they're, they're eating my beautiful black-eyed Susans. It just drives me crazy. It really does. <sighs> Terry says, shoulders are injured because of Caner Walker. Actually, um, as far as mom's shoulders go, it's just that she didn't really take very good care of herself most of her life and uh, overuse. So she just doesn't have any cushioning left. And She's never used a cane or a walker until she had her accident. Um, she had a really bad fall. When was that? Uh, right. November of 2020. 
she took a really horrific fall and I'm actually lucky to still have her. Um, but the fall has left her largely disabled. Um, she has come a long way. Um, she can do a lot of stuff for herself now, uh, but it, it took a lot out of her. And so ever since she had that accident, uh, everything has fallen on me. Uh, she used to be able to help me with the house cleaning and the yard and all of that type of stuff. And she just can't do it anymore. So that's like one of the struggles I have is now everything falls on me to take care of. And uh, it's been an adjustment and I'm still adjusting in, in all honesty. I'm still getting adjusted to it because it's a lot uh, to try to, to keep up with the working and all of the household stuff by myself. It's, it's been a lot, um, but I did discover Amazon, which has helped me tremendously. I have such a love hate with Amazon, uh, but I have to say it has been incredibly helpful because, uh, you know, she really can't be going and doing a lot of the shopping anymore. And, and I mean, she wouldn't be going and doing the shopping. Just taking her to a store is hard. Uh, she can't really, she doesn't really walk the distances. And even though I got her uh, like a, they call it a rollator. So she can use it as a walker. And then if she gets tired, she can sit in it and use it as a wheelchair. Um, and we have used it that way. Uh, but she doesn't really like to be pushed around in it. And I can understand that. So anyway, um, taking her shopping and getting things that she likes to use, just those days are gone. So we can go on Amazon and I can say, what do you need? What do you like to use? And then she still has... Uh, a say in, you know, like stuff like uh, what body lotion she uses, what shampoo she uses, things like that, you know, instead of it just all being handed to her, she gets to pick out what she wants to use. And I think that's important. So anyway, that's my life. <laughs> Sorry. I guess I needed to talk. Oh God. Chipmunks. Yeah. Chipmunks. Anyway. So yeah. But now she does have to walk with a cane and I, it probably does cause some issues. I do have her in uh, home physical therapy and the therapist was here today. So uh, what's nice is, um, so after the accident, we had the home health coming in and that was, she got occupational therapy and physical therapy, nursing care, you know, the whole thing. But what I learned is, um, you can still get home care, physical therapy, even if it's not immediately following an accident, if you ask for it. So if you have somebody that needs PT, uh, you can ask the um, primary care to write the script for the home therapist to come. And that is so much easier because if I had to take her two and three times a week to a, pl a place, you know, it would be a lot. So this way, Carolyn comes to the house, mom gets her care. I've got, you know, like a, there's a little exercise bike thing down there for her to use. And it, it works out really well. Plus she learns her exercises to do, and then she's home. And so she can, you know, do them on the off days as well. So anyway, just a tip. Um, Medicare will pay for the home care if your primary care requests it. It's all in how the script is written. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, Jody says shoulder replacement, one of the toughest, longest recovery, major surgery. That's what I thought. And he's like, eh, it's no big deal. We're in and we're out. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Cause you gotta, you know, cut all those muscles and tendons and reattach and, you know, stuff just doesn't heal the same. Oh, Ciara is uh, from Dublin. That is way far north. Oh, my goodness. Boondock Crafters. Lots of flooding right now. Oh, Boondock, I don't remember where you said you were. I know we talked about it. Let me look back. 
North Dakota. Okay. Flooding right now, seeing we have a possibility of snow early next week. Ugh. Oh my goodness. Ah, the northern, it's like the whole country is getting hit so hard. Oy. Holly says, sending you hugs. Thank you. That's so kind. Donna says, God bless your mom. I'm like, you're lucky to have her. Yes, I know. All right. It's true. I really, I'm not going to get into the circumstances of the accident, but um, it is a miracle she's here and that she uh, is, is not paralyzed. She had no uh, paralysis and uh, usually when an older person hits their head, they wind up having um, pretty severe hemorrhaging and head injuries. She had no head trauma. So it was, I'm grateful for her every day. That's why I'm glad to take care of her. Terry said, I sew on a vintage singer. Oh, those are really good. You know, um, I have an old Kenmore. Uh, it was mom's machine and the feed dog stopped working and then I couldn't find anybody to work on it. So I, I'd like to find somebody that could fix it. Boondock has a Juki. Oh, that's a good machine. I understand. They're very good. Donna says cover with tool and the rabbits can't get it. I'll have to try that because these stupid rabbits, you know, they even ate my uh, mini rose bushes how they could stand to bite into all those thorns, <laughs> I don't understand, but they did. So I had to, you know, dig up what I had left and put them into a pot and then put the pot up on a, like a plant stand. Cinnamon or hot pepper powder. Oh, I'll have to try that. I wondered about the hot pepper. I was thinking um, like making a hot pepper spray. Terry says, I know you're grateful. She's with you. My mom left us 17 years ago today. Oh, Terry, I'm so sorry. Oh, gosh, blessings to you, my friend. That's a hard day. My dad left us in 2001. 20 years ago. It's hard. To, well, 20. Let me think about this. 21 years ago. It was uh, right after 9-11. So that was, it was crazy. He was, um, my dad was um, career military. And so when he was sick, he was in the Naval Hospital. And, you know, with it being right after 9-11, oh my gosh, we had to go through military checkpoints to get in to see him in the hospital. And it was, it was scary. Sandra is uh, in Florida. I understand Florida has gotten quite warm all of a sudden. I have neighbor friends that moved down there and uh, they are already growing beautiful tomatoes and zucchini. So Florida, the long growing season there is amazing. Terry's, uh, your dad died a year before her. Oh yeah, that is really hard. I'm lucky that she has uh, hung out with me all of this time. So she's been with me 20 years because after he passed away, I just like had her live with me. You know, that was just kind of how that went. So anyway, we're a team. Uh, Terry says I sprinkled red, red pepper flakes and they grew really. Oh, well, you know, they are seeds, aren't they? <laughs> well, that's one way to get cayenne peppers. Uh, okay, so I think I'm caught up. Gosh, thank you all for being here. I sure do appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to check my notes because I actually made notes so that I could remember what I wanted to go over with you guys today. Let's see. Principal, I talked about that and I will do them um, for, I'll do, uh, yeah, for the, uh, the Sawtooth Star, I'll get that. And then the block that comes up this week, uh, I'll have all that. Um, put together for you. Let me just tell you, just really quick, the block that's coming up, it's a little bit of a bear. 
Okay. I'm not going to lie. It's a little bit of a bear. Um, just to preview it, this I made, I was going to do this at Hall uh, Halloween at Valentine's day. And I never got around to making the project I was going to do with it. Um, but I liked the block. So I kept the block, but here's, it is. So this is what's coming and it's this diamond and it's tricky. So I would say if you are not like super confident, this might be a little hard for you. It's hard because it's, it's all half square triangles. So every block is a half square triangle and it's a lot of, uh, points and intersections to line up and you can see like I didn't get it quite perfect down there so it's it is a bear so what I would say to you is when that one comes up try some scrap fabric and make one and see how you feel about it and if you just feel like uh, it's it's a little bit much and you're pulling your hair out, I would say um, don't stress yourself out, okay? Because you can always come back to these later. Um, what you can do is uh, the block after this one. I did a really uh, much more simple one. I just did a, a pinwheel, which it's I still think they're fun to make. They're easy, but they're still fun. So uh, what you could do is if this feels like a lot, just wait. And when that pinwheel comes up, you could make the pinwheel a couple of different ways. And then you could do like change the order of your rows, in other words. So don't connect the rows to each other yet. What you could do is you could uh, do the sash in between each block. So you have the row ready, but don't connect rows together until you try this. Now this is bigger. This is a 16 inch version. It is stunning. It is a striking uh, block uh, when you get it, but it's a challenge. So I want, I want this to be fun for you. I don't want you to be stressing out and pulling your hair out because that just takes the fun out of it. So um, for the, the people who are a little bit newer, um, just keep that in mind. And if it feels like too much and you're just like um, <laughs> feeling a little off center, please don't stress yourself out. Just you could even do another row of sawtooth star and you could change the color of the block. It, you, there's any number of things like just have fun with this particular quilt. That's like there's some rules, but there's really no rules. The, the, the only rule is that you enjoy making everything and that you feel like you learn from the process. So that's the big thing. Do you guys have any questions about, do you have any questions about the heart? Um, this I did. It was supposed to go with that diamond I just showed you. It was like, it's supposed to be like a, a hearts. Uh, I was going to do for Valentine's like hugs and kisses and then the hearts, but I just didn't get around to making it. But isn't that fun? So this one you can see, like I didn't do, the little bits down here. But these, I mean, you could do a different color in all four of your quadrants. You can do a lot with the hearts. I really like the hearts. It's one of my favorite motifs. So let's see if you guys have any questions about anything. <laughs> the peppers, that's funny. Oh, hi, Lynn. I see you too. Roxy says, thank you for sharing your quilt along. Well, thank you for 
chiming in with the live and watching the live video and, and spending time. I hope that you're able to uh, make some of the blocks with us. Jody says, perfect is for angels. I'm going to enjoy the challenge. That is a really great attitude, <laughs> honestly. So uh, just really take your time with it. Um, when I do the half square triangles and I put things together, uh, I press all those seams open so that I can use that uh, landmark of the, the visual landmark of the uh, triangle. So really um, focus on that and take advantage of using that landmark. But again, if it feels like just, you know, you're pulling your hair out, don't, don't stress out. Jody says, how wide is the sash? So, uh, two and a half inch strips. So I tried to keep everything in uh, very uh, standard sizes to make it really easy. So I'll, anytime I do sashing, it's two and a half inch strips. Roxy says, I learned that done is better than perfect. That is the truth. Hi, Paige. Roxy loves heart blocks too. Lynn, what are you doing? You do not have to send me a super chat. You're you are way too generous. I have to tell you guys, uh, Lynn, uh, she has been with me for a while and uh, she gifted me with um, bobbins for the machine because it's hard to find those 15J bobbins. I mean, they're like really hard to find. You can find the 15. They're everywhere. But uh, my machines, so there's the heavy duty. I don't know if you can see. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, there's, yeah, whoops, Oop, right there. <laughs> That's the extension table on the patchwork. Um, both of those use that 15J bobbin and I could not find them. And they were out even on Amazon. And so Lynn was like so kind and sent me a beautiful collection of those and I'm using them. So thank you, Lynn. And Paige says, enjoying your chat and videos. Oh, you're very kind, Paige. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being here. So, okay, here's what I wanted to say. So another option with this uh, quilt along is you don't have to make the whole big quilt. What you can do is you could make uh, one block of each and then you would have all five of them and then you can sew them into a table runner. Super easy. So you just make one of each. You do the sash, the same two and a half inch strips. Sew it all the way around uh, and then the border and it's a beautiful table runner and that's what I'm going to do. So uh, I will be finishing the full quilt. And then what I want to do is make blocks with you as a live. So along I'm thinking as I'm talking to you, um, I want to make those blocks and then uh, put them into a table runner. I think that would be really pretty. Oh, and I wanted to say, I was going to do a live sew along with you guys on this past Sunday, two days ago. And I'm so sorry that I couldn't do it. Uh, we just, I don't know. Things were weird last week. The news came out about the uh, diesel shortage that is coming. And I have to tell you, it really freaked me out. I'm still freaked out about it because uh, they're saying it will... Uh, primarily impact the East Coast. And uh, it, it totally freaks me out to think that that's coming. So um, I had to do some extra preparations. I'm big on emergency preparedness. And, uh, you know, because it's my mother and me, and I've got to take care of her. And if there are outages and I can't get things that we normally have and use, uh, I got to be able to have those things ready for us. You know, that's just how it is. So um, I'm probably a little obsessive about it, but 
it just is what it is. Uh, I will say it worked uh, really well in 2020. Uh, people thought I was crazy because of the way I got ready for that. Uh, but you know what? We did really well. We never ran out of anything, including TP. Uh, never ran out of TP. Had more than enough. And um, had all the baking supplies. Everything that we wanted or needed, we had it. So um, I felt very blessed <laughs> that I was um, encouraged by my uh, guardian angels to, you know, get out there and get the extra stuff. So that's what happened last week. And it just, it threw everything off. But anyway, that's okay. I feel like I'm getting back on track now. So that's why I wasn't on with you Sunday, like I had hoped. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, next, let me look at my list. I need, I need the list or I'm just, I'm not going to know what to talk about. Um, okay. So, uh, we talked last time about the color wheel and picking fabrics. And so I pulled a whole bunch of stuff just to kind of look at, and I'm trying to remember exactly what I did, but I'm going to bring these over and, uh, all of these, I pulled them from my stash. I did not buy anything new. I was going to go. I have to be honest, I was going to go to Joanne and pick up, um, what is it, the the violet, what was that combination? Okay, the violet, orange, and green. I was like, that is such an, to me, this seems so, so odd. But when I saw it in the cake plate, which that picture is in the blog post, and it, it's beautiful. Uh, but, you know, I just can't get to Joanne and I don't want to spend the money right now on on that. I do have uh, some fabric-y and, you know, quilty things that I'd like to get. But um, <clears throat> I didn't want to buy that fabric at Joanne right now. So I thought, all right, I'm just going to look in my, um, my stash of fabrics and pick from there. And I'll show you what I did. So... Give me a second to just kind of collect my thoughts so I can talk coherently with you about what I what I picked and why. Okay. So, uh, you know, we talked about power of three and uh, really using the triadic color scheme just because that is, you know, to me, the simplest way of using that wheel. And then I thought, well, you know, <clears throat> the other wheel, the first color wheel that I showed you, it was all just like this, the outer colors, like the super saturated, you know, the 100% uh, saturation. Uh, but, you know, when you're working with your colors, you know, it's, it's, the whole range. It's not just this, right? It's all of these. So you've got like a minty green and a sage green and an emerald green. And then your complementary is the red. And you've got, you know, the red red. You've got pink. And you've got this sort of like, a, I don't know, kind of a taupey, sandy color. And then you've got this more of a brick red. And so, you know, it's not just using this and this, right? It's a range. So uh, I'm a really, I'm big on pinks. I love pink. And so I thought, well, let me just start with pink. And then if I went with the complementary, there's these things in the greens. And so what could I put together? So I pulled this and see that is very right there in that pink and polka dots are easy guys because they go with anything. They're non-directional and they just work. They're like really, really an easy thing to use. Uh, so, you know, if you are wanting to experiment with colors and play with things, if you find things in polka dots, 
it, it's a great way to just experiment with the color and then let the color really do the talking for you in that block. So I got that one. And then I have this really special fabric that I've had for a long time and I haven't used it. And I call it the mint doggies because that's what it is. So it's all these little dogs. And there they are. And if we look on our color wheel, it's almost this color. So, I mean, this is literally what I'll do. If I know that I want to work in a particular range of colors, I will take this into Joanne and I will find where the colors match, uh, you know, and just, and I'll pull like several bolts uh, and put them all in the cart. And then I go over to those end caps I told you about last time where the tables are and I'll lay everything out and, and pick out. Because it's funny, what you see with your eye is not necessarily what reads in the palette. So anyway, but I thought that worked. And then I was like, well, what else would I go? And I didn't want to do red because I thought, well, that's going to look a little too Christmassy. And I didn't want a Christmas feel. So um, this could work. The solid. And then see that is that dark green. So it's not like a, a true triadic, but it is a complementary. And then you're working in the same color family. And then I thought the scale of the dogs with the polka dot and then the little flowers echoes really well with the, the polka dot. So I thought, well, that is cute. That could work. So that was one potential option. Um, another one was this. I love this fabric. So I thought, ooh, that works too. This, I'll tell you, isn't that gorgeous? I love this. This is uh, from Craftsy, the Boundless Fabrics. I got that on sale when right the like that last weekend that we had Craftsy. <clears throat> and everything was on sale. I bought a bunch of yardage and I got this one. I love it so much. And see, that works because the pink is almost the same pink. And it's still that minty green. And then this green picks up this green. So that works too. This is just, this is just me thinking out loud <laughs> about my process. And I just wanted to share that with you because I thought it might be helpful. Um, hopefully it is. Okay. What else did I have? Goodness. Let's see. I pull these things and then it was a couple of days ago and now I've got to like think what, to, what did I pull and why? <laughs> okay. Here's one. Uh, so then another one I did, <clears throat> I thought, well, what if I did the, um, the split complementary, which is another option. And so like what I'll do is I'll pick one, that mean color, which for me, I wanted to go with the blue green. Okay. And then if you go split complementary and you follow these lines and then for that, it's orange. Is that right? Yeah. Orange and red. with the blue green, right? I'm reading that backwards. Let me make sure. Yes. So I pulled this one, which I really like this. And these are, these are mostly jo Joanne fabrics. Just that one was from Craftsy. Everything else so far has been Joanne. So see how that is like right in here. The blue green so then i was like okay well i need an orange to pick that one and then um the red and i picked that one isn't that pretty that's my favorite so far 
and, and it's right back to uh, red, yellow, and blue, basically. But isn't that pretty? I really like that one. And then for the background, pick that cream. I love that. This is probably what I'm going to use. <clears throat> this I really like. This is all like little uh, crosses. It reminds me actually of cross stitch. And this is the same print. I love a print like that. They're good because you can just sort of work with the, the color, the hue. Um, it can be really hard with prints to get it all sort of together. And I feel like when you're exploring color and learning about color and experimenting with that, it's a whole lot easier to deal with non-directional uh, polka dots and just simple abstracts than with really complicated or complex prints, even though, of course, we all love those, right? We all love those. But it, it can make your job a little bit harder. So let's see. I pulled one more. And let me just give, give me a second <laughs> to try to remember what I did exactly. Because I'm not entirely sure. Okay, I knew what I did. Okay. So then I pulled... And this is just a fun thing that you can do at home. I mean, this, I love this wheel. You can just take this wheel and go through your own stash and just, you know, play with picking fabrics and see what comes up. So I had this blue and I really like the blue. Now this is a Walmart fabric. And I mean, it's almost that blue exactly. And then I wanted to do the split complementary. So um, it's red, orange, and orange, yellow. Okay. So I went with red, orange. It's very close to that. And this one worked as my, oops, as my orange, yellow. Back to this gold. It's leaning towards the orange, to be honest. But uh, I could pull, I could pull uh, orange yellow out of that. It's pretty close. Which again, it's what is it? Red, yellow, and blue. I told you, I'm just, I fall back on that all the time. But isn't that pretty? I'll tell you with the reds, reds are tricky. You got to be really careful with the red because you have a warm and a cool red. So if you know that you want to work <clears throat> with a red uh, and you like, say you have it in your stash and then you know, you want to use that and build out your, your color scheme around a particular red fabric, you definitely want to take a, uh, Take that with you to the fabric store to make your selections because, and I'm going to show you this, you have the warm red, you have the cool red. The warm red has more yellow in it. The cool red has more blue in it. And look at the difference. They're very different. I mean, if you have them apart, you know, it's not as obvious, you know, far apart, but when you put them together, look how different they are. Not wild. This is a, uh, I got this from Fat Quarter Shop, <clears throat> and this was part of their Christmas collection, and I used this to make a Christmas table runner, and I'll tell you, I ordered, I would, the reason I got this is because I had ordered the panel print and I decided I wanted to put the red on it when I made that. And I took the panel print with me to Joanne to pick out uh, the, the red to go with it. And everything was cool. This is a Joanne. You can see it on there. Um, everything was cool. They did not have any warm reds in the whole store. 
and everything clashed. And uh, so they had an orange orange and I was like, well, I don't want to put orange in a Christmas thing. You know, that seemed weird. So I wound up going back to the Fat Quarter Shop website and I ordered uh, this fabric, which was in the same collection that the panel print came from. So I knew that if I ordered something within the collection, it would be the same red. So that's how I was able to do that. So uh, ordering within collections is a really helpful way to make sure that all of your uh, tones and things are going to match. I will also say um, Fat Quarter Shop is really good that if you pick something, they'll give you uh, suggestions for, uh, I think it's usually like Kona solids that they suggest as a good uh, complement to whatever that, that print is. And those are typically right on. They do a really good job of that. So anyway, that's an option in terms of the red, yellow, and blue and using the split complementaries. I'm just kind of looking at this. So like I wouldn't do that because they're all too similar. And I think your, your, your black would be, it just wouldn't pop. You know what I'm saying? You want, if you're going to get out of the trouble to make this stuff and spend all the time, because it's a lot of time, all the time, all the effort, all the money, let's be, let's be real about this. This is not an inexpensive hobby. Even when you use inexpensive fabric, it still adds up. Um, you don't want to spend all of that time, effort, and money and then not have a block that just knocks your socks off, right? I mean, you really want it to be just something amazing in the end. I do anyway. You know, it's like the, the time that I have to actually do the physical hands-on making, it's very limited. Most of my time is spent doing everything else. The actual time that I get to just make and enjoy the making. It, it is the smallest part of anything I do in my life. So when I actually get to do it, my gosh, I want to enjoy it and I want it to look good. So that's, that's my take. Could do, I'm just thinking out loud again. I still think it's too close, even though you could call it analogous because they're all kind of the same. I wouldn't do it that way. I would do the complementary or the split complementary, and then you would just really get something um, super dynamic. I think this is, I think this is the one actually that one. Maybe this one. That really pops to me. If you have a favorite, tell me in the comments what your favorite is. So anyway, that's just a little color information. I hope that's helpful. I've heard from some other people that just the kind of thinking out loud is, is helpful just to kind of, you know, get some ideas and see some different things. I'm going to um, review through some of the comments. I'm going to change my glasses so I can see better. <laughs> Excuse me one second. Oh, these poor eyes. Okay, hold on. Okay, that's a little better. Uh, let's see. Roxy says, fashionista singer. Oh, that's a nice machine. Yeah, J15J, they're tricky to find. And for part of 2020, I mean, I couldn't get them at all. They were crazy. Terry says, here it comes. Yeah, here it comes. Do I mean as far as food is concerned? Yes. <laughs> Lynn says, uh, she has her singer fashion mate from 1969 that her dad bought for her. Oh, that is really cool, Lynn. It's actually probably uh, better quality than uh, any of this stuff. Roxy says, better to be careful. Yes, it is. I have to be really careful with her. 
combination sounds crazy, but I've seen it in fat frat. Yeah. You know, the designers, they know, yeah, I mean, these people are, you know, trained in art and design and, you know, if they're putting it together, then obviously it works. And when you see that, that combination, it's beautiful, right? Jody says, I had a ball using triadic points on the wheel. Oh, okay. So you did get it. That's a really, this is a great color wheel. I like this side. I just think it's interesting too, where you can, um, how it has all this where you can add the colors to just to kind of see how it uh, affects. And where this is helpful is when you're working with your fabric and you're working with undertones, <clears throat> uh, really seeing those undertones, uh, that that's helpful because undertones will impact how your fabrics go together visually. Uh, the mint doggy, I love the mint doggies. I have not been able to cut into it, honestly. Orange and green, I know. Oh, Sandra says 90 plus, wow. Okay, Paige says, a helpful explanation on using color wheel. Thank you so much, you are so welcome. Roxy says, isn't it fun to do fabric pulls? Yes, it is. I wish I had a bigger collection, but uh, that's I'm grateful for what I have. Fabric pull makes it come alive. It really does. And, you know, uh, the mini bolts. For me, I love the mini bolts. You know, uh, I did that video a little over a year ago on wrapping the fabric on the comic book boards. Honest to goodness, this is one of the best things I've ever done because you can just hold it up, right? And, uh, you know, if if I wanted to build out something around this, I would take this whole thing in my bag to the fabric store to, to use. And it's a big enough surface that you can really, I think, get an accurate feel and picture of how that's going to look in a in a than a finished piece. Color wheel gets it right. Well, yeah, it does. And I mean, it really, it really helps. Summer colors. Yeah, I need some summer colors. Sue says, it's amazing to me how colors that sound like they won't work together really work together. It is crazy. It really is. Red, yellow, and blue is so pretty. I know. Oh, Stan is here. Hi, Stan. And upstate New York, I hope it is warming up for you. I know the northern part of the country has just had the longest darn winter. So Crafty says, I use the water red for fall and winter projects. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. The warmer red. Yeah, that would work, wouldn't it? Stan says, complimentary colors make everything pop. It's so true. It's so true. It's just, um, yeah, if you have a, a, a block that's two colors, I mean, really, the surest way to have a successful um, a successful pairing is to just do color wheel complementaries and then pick your, uh, your background fabric. Boondock says, my likes are anything blue. I have a lot of blue. I realized going through this exercise that... I have a ton of blue. Uh, I have a lot of green. I don't have any violet or purple. I have one purple, just one. And if I had more of it, I would do the violet, orange, and green. But I don't have enough to do the full table runner. And I don't know that Joanne still has it. You know, I haven't been in Joanne now in a couple of months. So I don't know what the stock looks like. I have to go in and check them out soon. Let's see. Roxy says pink, teal, and purple. Well, let's see. Let's consult the wheel. Pink, teal, and purple. Right? Pink, teal, and purple. Let's see. All right. So we would have... Let 
be dead. Okay, let's see. Hold on, Roxy. I'm looking on here. Okay. Interesting. So, hmm. Okay. So, according to the wheel, if you wanted to go, I mean, you could do anything, honestly. But according to the wheel, so if you went, you would have to go with Tetrad. This is interesting. All right. So you'd have, there's your pink. And it comes down to the violet, right? Oh, look at this. Look at this. And then it comes down here to the blue green, which would be your teal. And then it comes up. Oops, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm off. Am I off? Wait, I'm getting my I'm getting my lines mixed up. Okay, no, that's right. Down here, and then it comes up to yellow of all things, and then back across. So there's your pink. There's your violet. There's your teal. It's your blue green, and then up to yellow. That's not one I would expect to add is the yellow. I guess if you did maybe a chartreuse, that's interesting. I'm sorry, I'm totally distracted by that. That's such a great question. Something like that, I mean, it's interesting to go to the store and then pull, pull those colors. And I mean, seriously, lay the wheel on the fabric bolt <clears throat> so that you can match them. Because when you don't have them right together, your eye can really play tricks on you. Color is very interesting to work with. Hmm, yellow. I would not expect the yellow. That's really throwing me off. But there it is. Yellow. Hold on. Maybe I'm not doing this right. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, here we go. Yeah, no, it's there. Okay. If you add yellow, I guess it would work. Let's see. Sandra says, I just got a delivery from Pat Quarter Shop. Three bundles of coffee. I have to say cough Coffee? Spot in light, medium, and dark. Oh, I bet it's beautiful. One says, temperatures are going down again later this week in Buffalo. Oh, you're in upstate also. Gosh. Oh, I feel so bad for you guys up north. Really a slow spring. Oh, thank you, Sandra. Stan says, guilty of buying too much purple. I don't, yeah, I... It has to be just the right purple for me, but it's like I realize that's kind of a hole in uh, my stash. And so another thing I realize is that to have a really, I don't want to say e efficient, That's that seems kind of crazy, but if you want to have the best possible, most usable stash, really you should have colors uh, from all of these sections. And if you have colors that are in all of the sections, you, you can always make anything, right? And if you can't get out for whatever reason for a while, then you have everything already at home, which I'm a fan of. <laughs> Lynn says, guilty of just buying too much fab. Oh, well, it's easy to do. Oh. Oh, okay. So Jody says pink, teal, and purple would be analogous. Okay. All right. Thank you. I could see that. Yes. So yeah, red, violet. It's be more of a blue or a blue violet rather than a blue green. 
because the blue green gets a little far over on the wheel. <clears throat> so it'd be a red, a violet, a blue violet would be more of an analogous or yes, it's kind of over here. Hmm. Or you could just do the red, yellow and blue. <laughs> We're all guilty of overbuying. Oh gosh, it's so easy to do. Holy cow. As he Stan says, I love Karen Brown's series on color harmony. She is amazing, isn't she? She has to be some kind. I know she, I don't know that much about her background. <clears throat> I've seen some people in the comments say that she was a uh, an organizer in her past life. Um but she has to be an educator of some sort because she's uh, so good uh, at uh, relaying information. And yeah, her color series I, and the amount of detail that she gets into is just like kind of mind blowing because, you know, it gets really complicated. It gets really complicated. That's why I just like this two dimensional representation, because I just think it can get it can get to be so difficult that um, people start to get overwhelmed and, and myself included, honestly. So this, this certainly helps me a dressmaker. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. She's really, um, her channel is amazing. So like, <clears throat> I think she's really incredible. Uh, with the way she teaches and with what she shares. And of course I love Missouri star who doesn't love Missouri star. I talked about that last time that uh, Misty is my favorite. I, I just have gotten to be very fond of Misty and I love her projects. And um, you know, they did a live last night and they're doing some kind of a sale on their block magazine right now. And I, Think I'm gonna do it. I I like getting magazines. I like I'm online so much that I really enjoy, you know, having a book to read or a magazine. I've always loved magazines. So <clears throat> I get a couple of different quilt magazines, but I think I'm gonna let one go by the wayside. I'm gonna keep the Better Homes and Gardens ones. I like those, uh, but I think I am gonna do the Block magazine. It's a little bit expensive. But there's no ads apparently in the in there at all. It's all their work. And you get a digital copy. And I guess they have an app of some sort that goes with it. So, I mean, it's a lot. So I I get my, um, my YouTube paycheck on Friday. So I'll have a little money again. And I think I'm going to go ahead and just do that block magazine. So Missouri Star. And then um, Fat Quarter Shop is a great channel. I love them. And who else do I really like? Who are your favorites? Missouri Star, Karen Brown. Oh, gosh, I had one that escapes me right now. There's so many good ones, really good ones. All right, you guys. I don't know if anybody has any specific questions or anything that they would like to share. Oh, Maureen says block is more of a book than a magazine. I used to buy them for five 95 each. Yeah. I'm going to do the subscription because it just looks like a great deal. And um, yeah, I mean for five 95, you can't even buy a pattern for that. You know, pattern is like 10 or $12. Oh, Sheila's here. Hi, Sheila. Elena, I just believe you in North Carolina. Oh, I love my North Carolina people. Lisa Capen. Oh, I think I have watched that. Oh, Donna Jordan. Yes, Donna is amazing. Their videos are so good. She, Donna crams so much information into one video, and it's so well done. Just really well done. Stephanie Stitches. I haven't watched that channel. I have to look for that one. Pat Sloan. Yep, Pat is really good. 
April. Oh, April. I like April too. She's funny. Yes. L Lori Holt. Oh, for sure. Yes. Lori Lori Holt, she is like, what a powerhouse. That woman, I don't know when she ever sleeps. <laughs> I mean, really, it's crazy. The books, the patterns, the fabric designs, the cross stitch. She is incredible. Quilt in a Day. Oh, I, I think I've watched that one. Tana makes you think you can do what she does as fast as she does. <laughs> <laughs> I can't move as fast as Donna Jordan. I can tell you that. Let's see here. <laughs> Stephanie Stitches. Oh, yes. Quilting Life. I love Quilting Life. Lori has beautiful designs. She does. Flamingo Toes. I think I've... Is that a, is that a channel or a designer? I love quilting life. Yeah, Sherry McConnell. She's really good. Her fabric designs are so pretty. Uh, I mentioned her last time. The way that she puts color together is so good. Well, and Lori too. I mean, they just... They make it look really easy. And it, for them, it probably comes very easy. But... Their, their designs are just absolutely gorgeous. I I don't have any Lori Holt fabric um, myself. I did do some of her cross-stitch patterns, and they are so cute and so beautifully packaged and really well done. I mean, I didn't even know what I was doing, and I was able to make it, so <laughs> that was really good. Um but I do have like a, it's like a, they call it like a mix where Fat Quarter Shop like pulls different stuff and puts it together. Uh, a Moda mix, it might be. I think it's a Moda mix, but it was Sherry's design work and the fabrics are beautiful. It's still in my stash. I bought that. I had boxed it actually. I think Christmas of 2020. It was my Christmas gift. Uh, that I bought <clears throat> that as a um, as a set, and I have done nothing with it. It's still in there. It's all fat quarters. Teresa Louise. Oh, I don't know that channel. I have to look at that one. Tula. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, that is like you know that designer from a mile away is very very recognizable. Corey Yoder. I'm, I have to look at that. Subscribe to her blogs. Bag makers. I like making bags too. Um, so sweetness. Oh my gosh. Her stuff is so good. Oh, Sherry gives patterns in every email. Oh, I didn't know that. I'll have to look at that. Bev McCulloch is Flamingo Toes. I, okay, I will look at that. I know I have looked at her stuff. Maybe it was embroidery. I'm thinking embroidery. I'll recheck on that one. Guys, great suggestions. So sweetness. Yeah, she uses a lot of Tula Pink in her stuff. So sweetness. I mean, oh, have you? Oh, gosh. I have uh, always wanted to buy some of her, like, what was it? The minikins that she does for So Sweetness. What a beautiful package of stuff. It's like 10 patterns, and she gives you all of the video tutorials to go with the patterns. I mean, really very thorough. I would love to get some of that. The minikins in my spare time. Uh, so whatever. Oh, I don't know that channel. Oh, gosh, guys, these are really, really great suggestions. Well, I think I'm going to wrap it up. Bye, Boondock. We'll see you next time. Um, I'm going to wrap it up. And I would just like to thank everybody for stopping by and for being here. I really appreciate you. And I should let you know that I do have a Facebook group 
I'm not very good at talking about it. <laughs> I'm trying to get better at uh, managing it and doing more, being more involved, I should say. Uh, but if you would like to join the Facebook group, it is uh, Patty Mac Makers. So join us over there. That is a great place where you can share uh, your pictures of what you're working on. And then I can see what you're doing. And if you have questions, you can ask in the group. And there are really, really helpful, smart people in that group that if you get stuck on something, somebody... Uh, nine times out of 10, or I should say 10 times out of 10 can help you get unstuck and really super nice. I really am careful about um, who is in the group so that it's, it's very closely monitored. We'll put it that way. Let's see. Oh, Terry has free patterns. If you want to try them, Baker street bag is a free pattern. I've made it a million times. Oh, um, so sweetness. I'm just checking the last of the comments here. All right, everybody. I'm just going to wrap it up for now. I'm going to say thank you. Join us on the Facebook group if you are on Facebook. And I will, in any event, see you back here. I will have the next block up for you on Saturday. And uh, if I can get myself together, <laughs> which hopefully I can, uh, I'll do a, a live on Sunday and uh, sew a block or two with you. And if you can drop in, I'd love to have you. And uh, I think that's it. I don't have a time in mind. I really don't. I'm so just seated my pants right now. If you have a preferred time, let me know. Earlier is better uh, for the light. And what I was thinking I would do is I would uh, take the computer and move it over there. And then you can see me sewing and then I can just kind of, I, cause I can see the chat, which is really nice and um, check in with everybody. Okay. I'm going to wrap it up and just say, thank you so much for being here and uh, just keep sewing, keep quilting. And I will see you around YouTube and for sure in the next video. Thank you.